Hey guys, so um, this is a continuation of what it was like to grow up with ADHD as well as what it's like to have ADHD as an adult woman. In the first video, we were very ADHD in that we talked about a lot of different things, but we talked a lot about like early childhood ADHD. For those of you who are new, for some reason you didn't watch the video, I literally just set to go live just now. Um, <laughs> uh, I was diagnosed with ADHD at a very young age. I was about five years old and I started taking medication for it in first grade. So most of my young childhood, I was medicated with ADHD. And I feel like I've never not known life with ADHD because even if I wasn't diagnosed, I still had it and it still caused problems. We just didn't know what was going on. So, um, just a quick caveat, I was on ADHD medication from 5 to 15. Um, I feel like counseling and therapy in addition to medication is an excellent course of action. There are some comorbidities like anxiety and depression that with counseling and with kind of changing how you think and feel about yourself, maybe some of that can be mitigated or at least... Um, acknowledged and not downplayed, but put into perspective. Because one of the problems many of us with ADHD have is that our emotions feel bigger than they actually need to be. That doesn't mean our emotions are not legitimate. It means we feel more of that emotion in the moment. It's like the limiter in the brain is off for that. And we also don't necessarily make enough. Well, our brain makes it, but we can't receive it necessarily serotonin and dopamine, which means we don't necessarily get as much pleasure from intrinsically motivated projects. So that is another thing you might want to, this is going to affect your children are your sorry if you have a kid with ADHD it is going to affect them or if you are a kid with ADHD it will affect you it doesn't mean you're broken it's just something to know um and it's going to also affect you if you're an adult with ADHD I also want to say that children's feelings are valid and do deserve to be heard um I I, I hope that's not controversial. I know at one time it was way long ago. Hopefully we can acknowledge that children are people and the things they go through do affect them and do have meaning in their lives and it can be something they carry for the rest of their lives. So um, what I really want you parents who may not watch the first video, I don't know, what I really want you to hear and listen and understand is how you react to your child's ADHD, how you react to news about your child's ADHD, how you react to how teachers talk about your child's ADHD. All of that in front of your kid is going to affect how they see themselves. See themselves. Sorry. So if you are open to suggestions, if you're receptive, if you treat it in a very positive way, if it's something we're going to, you, you're never going to fix ADHD. You're never going to solve ADHD. ADHD doesn't go away with discipline. It doesn't go away with, with uh, military school. It doesn't go away with age. You're, if you're an ADHD kid, you're going to be an ADHD adult. You just hopefully will have different coping mechanisms and it's not going to rule your life. But it's not a death sentence and it doesn't make you a bad person. It just makes your brain a little bit different than some of the other brains. But every brain is made differently. Every brain is made uniquely. And um, mm, there is no perfect type of person. We're all good. You know what I mean? Like, you're good. You're good enough. Your kid's good. Okay? So it's really just about finding things that's going to work for them finding things that is going that are going to help them learn that's going to help them deal with life um and teaching them coping skills so they can survive on their own and have happy lives okay so your kids not broken we just got to work together to accom change ourselves to deal with how life what life throws at us and to respectfully ask for accommodations that we might need okay it's all like self care right so um, in the first video, I talked about, like I said, a lot of things, but what I really wanted to focus on was kind of a very o loose overview of what it was like being a child with ADHD. Um, and I wanted to focus on the feelings because I feel like a lot of parents who they themselves may not have ADHD or they don't understand that they have ADHD or they haven't been diagnosed because it is her hereditary. It has to come from somewhere. Um, they may not understand how their kids feel. And 
often when I see parents talking about their kids ADHD it's very detached it's very clinical it sounds like they're just quoting the doctor okay that is not what your kids experiencing they're experiencing feelings so I want to go over the feelings I felt they may be similar to what your kids going through it at least will be some talking points it'll open up some communication um, you may want to show them some of my videos and maybe it will help them identify because I do think seeing an adult who has ADHD who is living a life and is fairly happy fairly well adjusted can be very positive because it gives them a future to work towards and there's a few other adult folks with ADHD who vlog about it um, my whole channel is all ages friendly so you know that's a plus <laughs> For me um they can watch some of my art videos too if they want and i also do talk about being adhd in those and i also talk about what it's like being an adult artist with adhd and a lot of adhd people are very creative your kid is probably very creative so they may find some inspiration some comfort and some hope in there so if you're comfortable watching those videos with them and talking to them about some of the things that come up go for it and they can always reach out or you can reach out for them i'm happy to um answer any questions within reason right like don't please don't ask me like super intensely personal stuff um necessarily like but anyway um so the main feelings i felt as a kid with adhd and i'm not talking about necessarily as a teenager but i'm talking about as like a five-year-old to like about to hit puberty is i felt out of step i felt overworked I felt very anxious. Um, I felt like I was just always wrong. Like I was made wrong. Like it just didn't fit into the world. And it wasn't that I was an outcast. I was fairly popular. It was, I just felt like I didn't get people. Like I was um, putting on a mask and putting on an act to try and be what other people wanted. And it was kind of killing me, frankly. It was very difficult. I felt like I was always walking a tight rope and that acceptance was always conditional and i hope your child i hope you don't have to go through that i was always forgetting stuff i was very disorganized and i really did not do well with change i like structure and i liked stability so um my teenagers with adhd were like a whole thing a whole thing and um i'm gonna try to talk about it very briefly because there's so much there and some of it is very personal and some of it is very much my family specific. Um, I don't want to go into it too much because I really do not want anyone to conflate my ADHD experiences as indicative of the whole. I really dislike ADHD stereotypes because I find that a lot of of people will see those the list of what an ADHD person is and it's not them at all and then they don't get diagnosed and they're missing out on medication and therapy and accommodations that would make their lives easier and better and might make them happier so um, I, I want to be really careful about that because I there are some ADHD people who in their advocacy tend to speak for the whole and they are not necessarily medical professionals but they act like they might be so I also want to make it crystal I am not at all a medical professional in any way shape or form I am just an adult who has ADHD who is sharing her experiences so these are lived experiences they are not everyone's experiences and they are in some ways time period specific because I grew up in a very interesting time for ADHD and things are very hopefully very different now so um in case you guys don't know me, that's cool. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the channel. I am a 34 year old adult woman. I grew up in Southeast Louisiana. I currently live in Nashville, Tennessee, but I am getting married and moving back to Nashville. So yes, uh, women with ADHD can have stable relationships. Um, I know sometimes people think we cannot, but we can. Um, uh, what else? Let's see. My, I love my partner a lot, but he is not what many people would consider an exciting person. I 
uh, dated a lot of exciting guys in high school and I found that I really didn't like the anxiety. So Joseph's actually a very reliable, very steady person. He's a very calm personality and I find that actually works very well for me because um, in high school I dated a lot of guys who had ADHD and we would just like play the emotional ramp up game until we were both screaming. So um, that's not good. That wasn't good for me. That didn't work for me. I have a lot of friends who are married to partners who have ADHD. So both partners have ADHD. Um, it can work. Um, it takes work. It can work. It takes work. But you may decide that you don't want that that kind of life, right? Okay, and that's fair. Okay, it's fair. Um, so I don't want to like go into anything that might even come across as ADHD bashing because I sincerely do not feel that way. But I will also say that a lot of guys I dated who had ADHD were not medicated and they were not getting help. They'd been diagnosed, but they didn't have parents who were able to accommodate their needs. So there was a lot of other things going on that made the situation not a good situation. But I really like stability and I really like reliability. <laughs> I really like reliability. I like being able to count on people. And that's really important to me. So when it comes to dating and love and romance, you really need to examine what you really need and what you really want and not just what's great in the moment. I know that sounds like, oh, every parent's advice. I'm sorry. I know. I know. It's like I'm talking to myself in the past now and I apologize. Um, anyway, so um, 34, sorry, short-term memory problems. That is an ADHD thing. And I do actually have a list of things I want to talk about this time. So um I am a professional comic artist. Uh, most of the work I do is self-driven, so I'm mostly self-employed. Um, I do a lot of different things. I do a lot of different gigs. So I draw kidlit comics both for hire and for myself. Um, in fact, my own kidlit comic, 7-inch Kara, it's really all ages, 7-inch Kara. Um, you can read the first six chapters for free as a web comic. The main character is an 11-year-old little girl and she's coded to be ADHD. She comes from a Lilliputian, so tiny people society, and they don't have, they don't have things like ADHD, but she is ADHD, if you get what I'm saying. Like, her behavior is ADHD, her reactions is, AD, is based on my own, you know, who I was. She's not me, but a lot of how she reacts to things is based on what I went through or what I saw my friends going through. So she is intended to be ADHD and other ADHD people have read it and then asked me like, hey, is Kara ADHD? I don't want to offend you. It's not going to offend me. Is Kara ADHD? Yeah, she's ADHD. She's supposed to be. Um, I wanted to create a positive portrayal. So her parents, that is never, you know, when you're ADHD, it comes up a lot. Like, you're too loud, you're too this, you're too that. That's not really Kara, okay? Like, her parent, well, she is. She's a lot, okay? I love Kara, but she's written to be a lot. Um, that's never a, a reason they're mad at her, really. Like, her dad a little bit, because he's kind of based on my dad. And my dad had a really hard time dealing with my ADHD. But I kind of think dad was ADHD. And often we don't like in others what we don't like about ourselves. Um, and I'm just an intense person. <laughs> um, but uh, I wanted it to be a positive portrayal. And I didn't want it to come up as like bad, bad, no, no. Um, there's like a, a joke. That's not a very funny joke. Um, it's a single panel cartoon. And two dogs are talking. And one dog says to the other dog, my name is no, no, bad dog. What's yours? And that was definitely how I felt as a kid. was like, no, 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 no. So for Kara, I didn't want that to be part of the depiction. Okay, I wanted ADHD kids to see her and see that she's likable and that people like her and that she's got all these good traits too. And I wanted them to be able to see those good traits in themselves. That's really important to me because how ADHD people are depicted in media breaks my heart. And even how we depict ourselves breaks my heart. And I feel like a lot of how ADHD people talk about our lives is very, often comes across as kind of downbeat. And it's important to talk about those things. I'm not, I'm not Mary Sunshine. I'm not going to pretend things aren't the way they are. But there is a lot of positives and there's a lot to love about us. So I wanted to kind of focus on those sort of things for care. So I would actually really appreciate it if, especially if you're ADHD or your kid's ADHD or your nephew or your niece or grandkid, whoever, if they read it, let me know what they think about it. Let me know what you think about Kara herself. Um, 
because it's not a story about ADHD. It's a story with an ADHD character who is the main character and is portrayed as a positive character. So um, let me know what you think. And you can read that. You can read the first six chapters for free at 7inchcara.com. And a lot of, boy, boy, is the longer I'm a comic artist, the more I find out that there's loads of other comic artists who are also ADHD. Many of them got diagnosed as adults. Um, many of them are female or female identifying. So that's really cool. Except also it's like, these are all, now it's like all these people I would like to talk to, but I'm so afraid to talk to because it's really hard for me to get over the fact that I'm like loud, annoying, over the top Becca, you know, like, anyway, that's something I'm working on. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about in this segment of my life with ADHD. Okay. Because like while rational me can realize that I'm kind and I'm empathetic and I'm generous and I'm always doing for other people and I have a lot of love to give and a lot of passion and those are all wonderful things. Sad ADHD 13 year old Becca who dealt with a lot of rejection and got dumped by a lot of friends can only see that other people will see those as negative things. So that's something I'm working on. And I really think therapy would help a lot, which is one of the reasons I'm such a big advocate. Like I can't afford to get that help right now, but if you can, you should. And if you have a kid, you should, you know, um, like take care of yourself and love yourself. That's really important. So, um, let's see, we're talking about Becca here. Okay. So I freelance teach. I don't just teach online. Like I, I actually teach, um, so the past year I taught at the little art house. I teach, used to teach with Plaza. I used to teach with NCE. Uh, right now we're doing COVID quarantining. So everything is canceled. And also I'm moving back to, I'm getting married and moving back to Louisiana. So a lot of my life is going to change. So I'm a little hesitant to say I am, I am, I am, because I don't know when you're going to be watching this. And I don't know where the next year is going to go, honestly, other than I'm going to be married. Um, and hopefully in Louisiana, but, um, I have taught and regularly teach with St. Charles Parish Library System. So that's here in Louisiana. I taught with the Nashville Library System. I've student taught with SCAD. I've taught at a few different elementary schools. Um, I have an MFA, but I do not have a bachelor's in teaching. So it's like K through 12 art teaching is not a lot of what I've done. It's mostly like private comic, private alcohol marker, private watercolor lessons, that kind of stuff. But I do a lot of teaching. That's how I earn a lot of income now. I used to earn a lot of income being a convention artist. And I've talked about that in my life with ADHD. But I didn't like how unstable that income was. And I also didn't like what it was doing to me mentally and physically. It was physically kind of destroying me. So I wanted to kind of pivot to something else I love. I like teaching people how to draw. I'm very passionate about teaching people how to draw and getting them to enjoy art, even if they're not the best artist and, and finding value in making something from your own imagination. So I really like that. So I wanted to kind of pivot over to that, especially because I do a lot of teaching online. Anyway, it, it's something I've, I've had a lot of experience with. So that's kind of where I'm pivoting. Um, but I, I used to do a lot of conventions for many years, like 12 cons a year for like seven years. And um, I've also done a lot of comic anthology work and a lot of freelance work, both as an illustrator and as a comic artist. And I'm a member of the Society of Children's Books Writers and Illustrators. And I am a big advocate for kids comics and how awesome kids comics are and how we need more, so many more kids comics and how diversity in kids comics should also include um, mental diversity, neurodiversity. So um, I know that's that's not like it's not something a lot of people are necessarily championing. It's like a lot of comic artists will get behind it, but they won't actually support neurodivergent creators in a meaningful way. And I'm not trying to insult anybody. I'm just saying there's so many causes right now. I understand, but that's one that's dear to me. Um, and I feel the best way to support that is to create content that fits into that. So Seven Inch Kara, she is. ADHD like me um, and maybe like you. So um, I have an MFA in sequential art, got that from SCAD. So that was two years of intense studying and long days and a lot of focus. And I have a BA from the University of New Orleans with a minor in earth environmental science. So um, 
when it comes to school, I have always managed to give them what they want, even if sometimes it's like, I, I, um, school for me <laughs> was a lot like holding on to a rocket, uh, like, okay, imagine a rocket, and then there's like a crummy school plastic seat bolted onto the outside of the rocket and I, there's nothing to hold on to so I'm holding on to the underside of the seat and it's like burr, 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 right okay that's been me in school okay so like I liked my teachers and I liked the social aspect and I like learning but it's the sitting and focusing and doing repetitive tasks that I never really liked but I always made fairly decent grades I'm very fortunate in that regard but I also want to put that out there because so many people think ADHD means your kid's going to do crappy at school and that's not there's that's not the case you just need to find the right accommodations for them and in the other video I do talk about some of the accommodations that my mom took because it wasn't like the school was going to make a lot of accommodations um some of the accommodations my mom put in place at home that really 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 helped me so um I am not particularly an impulsive person I do um I have been working really hard on not saying impulsive things I tend to be very introspective and very reserved um, with friends and with you guys. I'm very outgoing. I like being outgoing, but years of social ramifications for being me and not getting what other people want out of me, you know what I mean? Not understanding, not like actually receiving has given me a lot of social anxiety so I am not as confident as I would like to be and I feel like that hurts my career in a lot of ways um it's very difficult for me to network it's very difficult for, it's physical physically painful for me to ask people for favors because I have been let down so many times that it's very hard for me to even ask it's hard for me to feel like I deserve kindness I know that sounds cold I said sounds awful I'm sorry anyway yeah i'm working on it i'm working on it okay like this is not me saying i don't deserve kindness this is me saying i am working on how i feel about myself and how i engage with other people um when i teach when i'm regularly teaching um i am a lot i'm much happier emotionally because i am an ambivert i like being around people and when i'm teaching kids in particular it's really really rewarding for me because especially I had this group of 10 year old girls when I taught at the little art house and they're just amazing like I can't speak highly enough of those kids they were so sweet they were so encouraging they'd never even met before we I taught them okay but they were so good to each other and I just loved it and I want more I want I want more classes like that I want to encourage more our young artists to be kind and encouraging and supportive of one another and um that was just wonderful so um after i move and once covid is kind of settled down and we've kind of settled down ourselves i would like to start offering private art lessons particularly in comics and in storytelling so that's kind of my next step and we also want to start a family and I am currently in book limbo where there is strong interest in a couple of books I've pitched, but we have COVID going on. So nobody is, well, rather the publisher who's interested in me is not in a position to accept new books right now. So we're kind of, we're kind of dancing that, but I would really like to have a book traditionally, I say, yeah, published through a publishing house and distributed through a publishing house. And um, I'm currently working on getting 7-inch Kara Kickstarter. So it's, the pre-launch page is up. We're working on the mailing list. Joseph's been putting out ads for Kara. So we're working on building up a bigger audience before we launch the Kickstarter. But that's all um, stuff I'm so fortunate to have a fiance who helps me out a lot and really helps me with my goals. That's, that's huge, it's so helpful. Okay, like women with ADHD, we normally don't get that. Usually we're doing that for somebody else. Um, so I'm really, really fortunate. And I, I have had a lot of really good people in my life in that regard, like my mom, who um, are very generous with helping me with my things, you know? Um, so I want to acknowledge that privilege because a lot of people don't have it. And when you have something like ADHD, having that makes a big difference in what you can accomplish. It doesn't mean you'll, you can't if you don't, but it makes it easier if you do. So um, 
that's kind of what's going on with me right now. There's a lot of stuff kind of like in hiatus and I really feel like I was just finally getting my life together, you know, and then everything kind of just falls apart. But that's happened to me actually several times. Um, so I am kind of old hat to it and I also know that I have what it takes within myself to pick things up and get things going again and that I have many of those connections in place and it's not that I mean in, in previous examples it wasn't necessarily that I ruined it it was like some big bad exterior force happened and in this instance again it's a big bad exterior force so it's not me it's I need to be able to pick things up after if that makes sense people with ADHD you probably get what I'm talking about where we always think we're the ones who screwed it up and I have to keep reminding myself like it's COVID I didn't do this it's COVID so um I kind of want to talk about how I feel as an adult with ADHD. Um, I have talked in the My Life with ADHD series, I've talked about all kinds of different things like the accommodations I make, I talk about how I earn money, how I don't earn money, all those sorts of things. So um, I recommend you check those out because I'm not going to really cover those in class. In the first video I talked about how we were introduced to the planner system in fourth grade and I have been a planner person ever since. Um, it is the only way I accomplish as much as I accomplish and people are like Becca you get so much done. It's because I use a planner and I also want to point out that not every ADHD person benefit like planners are like planners are weird in that they are not a cure-all for every person. Um, if you can get yourself into the habit, they can be really great, but there's a lot of people with ADHD who can never get it to be a habit for them. So I don't want to make it sound like this is a magic tool that will save your life. And I also don't want you to feel bad if they do not work for you. Um, you can use your smartphone and a lot of the functionality with your smartphone. Like I have a smartwatch and I got it specifically because it will send me calendar reminders and that way I'm not just using a planner, I also have a calendar reminder on my wrist and that's really helpful. So there's a lot of different kinds of accommodations out there and I really recommend you search for the one that's going to work and stick with you. So my ADHD now, um, I want to point out I am not medicated. I would probably benefit from medication and I am open to it again, but I want to go through the proper channels and get proper medication for it and at a dose that is appropriate for me with a medication that's appropriate for me. I do self-medicate with caffeine, which is, it is what it is. It's a legal drug, um, but it helps me focus and it helps me like actually knuckle down, which is important because about 100% of what I do is all self-motivated. I have to be able to make myself do things, which, you know, has never, it's, it's, it's always been a matter of willpower and I have a lot of willpower, so it's never been the hardest thing for me, but it is something I struggle with and I do wanna be honest with you guys that it is something that I have to make myself do. It's not something that's naturally there for me. Um, I am absolutely not a morning person. I am an evening person. That's when my brain wakes up. So I do struggle with earlier morning things. And when I'm scheduling teaching gigs, when I'm scheduling any work related stuff, I always try to get it after noon. But, um, you know, some people don't want to do that. And I do have to try to be flexible and accommodate them as well. But my brain works better in the afternoon. So I do try to try to get it towards that. And of course, some people you admit that to and they're really nasty about it. And they're like, you're an adult. You should be able to be five, 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 five. And then you get some people who are like, I feel you, girl. I'm the same way. We can schedule it at 9 p.m. if that's what works for you. So, you know, your results may vary. Um, so I do have some social anxiety. I am naturally very gregarious, but that has backfired in my face so many times that it really makes me doubt myself and it makes me doubt my personality and it makes me doubt my likability. I do have female friends, but I have a lot more male friends. And still, even now, some of my very best friends are fellow ADHD people. And one of them, she probably knows who I'm, I'm talking about her. She feels like a sister to me. Um, yeah, I really value it. Wow, I'm gonna cry about it. I really value our friendship. And um, yeah, it's just been really nice having her in my life as a friend. So um, there's still a social anxiety component which makes it difficult because believe it or not, as a woman, a lot of comics is about personality and people liking you. And I am currently lacking the confidence to go and talk 
to people. I used to be so good at it and I'm so bad at it now. Um, I also feel like I've watered down my personality so much when dealing with other people because I'm so afraid of rejection that I'm just completely not memorable. So that's something I want to work back towards being me again. Um, I do have anxiety. Um, and a lot of that anxiety over the years has been used as fuel to get me to get work done. But it's a very abusive way to make yourself work. And it doesn't work that well. And it takes a huge emotional toll. So I'm really trying to retrain my brain and trying to work on finding more ways to have intrinsic motivation and an intrinsic reward system, which is difficult for folks with ADHD. I do struggle with depression. It's off and on. I do have a seasonal, I do have seasonal affective disorder, which kicks my butt in Nashville because in Louisiana, we get about an hour more usable sunlight than we do in Tennessee. So um, that's just been wiping the floor with me. Um, but I also have just like regular, <laughs> regular clinical depression. Um, it's a lot better than it used to be, but I have struggled to be, to be real with you guys. I have struggled with suicide, suicidal ideation and suicidal thoughts. So, um, again, if you are struggling with that, I really, really cannot recommend enough. I implore you to talk to a doctor. Don't talk to your friends necessarily because they are not always emotionally able to do this for you. Talk to a doctor. Um, I do work hard to focus. Starting that focus and finding hyper focus can be difficult. There's some days I just can't. It's just an ADHD day and I'm forcing myself to, to get the work done, forcing myself to draw. And then I think I have videos where I talk about things I use to get myself into a focus or a work mode. But if I don't, I will record a follow up video on that. Um, that can be very useful for folks who maybe medication isn't an option for them or they live in countries where medications that are typically used to treat ADHD are not available or they cannot afford medication at this point in time or for whatever reason. You know, some people just have off days too, like even non-ADHD people struggle with focus. Um, I have to work really hard to kind of understand people. There's a lot of stuff people do in everyday life that I just, that don't make sense to me at all. Like uh, I'm in a group chat, for example, where someone in the chat like will complain. And then if we commiserate with that person, they'll then negate like everything we said and be like, oh, it wasn't that bad after all. And I like, I 100% don't get it. Okay. So I'm not like complaining about that. I'm just like, I just don't get it. So I just kind of keep my mouth shut because like, what do I even say? Um, so there's a lot of times where I feel like I just don't get people. And I work really hard to try and understand people because once I understand where they're coming from, I can usually empathize. But there's still a lot of stuff people do that is that doesn't make sense. I mean, like I understand what hypocrisy is, but I also don't understand just anyway. I'm working hard to get people, okay? And in college, it was really important to me to take psychology and sociology classes, and that actually helped a lot. Just kind of understanding general human nature and a generalized version of human behavior kind of helped me get a baseline. Um, I definitely have confidence issues. They've gotten a lot worse. Um, and something I've had to work on off. Sorry, these are such long videos that they keep getting cut off, which is probably my phone's cue to be like, wrap it up, girl. Um, so, um, like I said, I work hard to get people and I do have confidence issues. I didn't always, like, uh, up until high school, I actually, in terms of, like, academics and self-worth, I felt pretty good about myself. Even in college and in grad school, I felt pretty good about myself, but to be really frank, working from home uh, and being so reliant on the internet and social media for work and validation is not healthy for me and it might not be healthy for, it's probably not healthy for a lot of people. So um, I have noticed that when I'm working more out in the group, in the field, in the physical meat space, I do a lot better. So that's why I want to um, do more private teaching because having like a good balance that kind of feeds the rest of my work and gives me the confidence I need for that. And then I can go out and actually interact with my comic peers. Like, like I'm a worthwhile person, you know, instead of feeling like I'm the garbage that nobody wants to talk to, which I know, I know it's not true, but how you feel about yourself versus reality are often very different things. Right. And I'm working on that. Um, so, um, I do want to point out that, um, I'm much, much more hopeful 
than I used to be. I'm much more at peace with myself, at peace with who I am, at peace with what I'm capable of, and at peace with where my life is going to go. I've had some disappointments. I've had to get over some things. I've had to kind of accept certain realities, but I still believe in a happy future and I still have a lot of things that make me happy and that I get up for and that I love in life. Even with COVID, I still have a lot of things. I mean, I, but I would like to go out and do things just like everybody else, but it's not safe. And I do care about protecting not only my health, but the health of others. And I have several people in my life who their they would be they would kill them if they got COVID. So it's very important to me to protect them. But I still have things that I'm hopeful for and I'm looking forward to. So um, I don't want this at all. Me talking about the things I'm struggling with is not an indication of the quality of my life or even what an overall day looks like. It's just me trying to paint an honest picture as an adult with ADHD. And you know there there are more of us. But there's not necessarily a lot of us and there's not necessarily a lot of research or information just because it is kind of a newer diagnosis. I think it first came about in the 50s and it's become increasingly recognized and codified ever since. And I feel like even in the 90s it wasn't really very well researched or very well understood. So this is kind of new grounds for a lot of people. So I'm hoping that talking very earnestly and honestly about my life and what I go through and what I've been through can help people and it can help people have a trajectory and help them see a possible future or maybe see some pitfalls that they would like to avoid. You know, like I'm sharing this not to just expose myself and be vulnerable and be like, here's all the things I don't like about myself. Have at it. It's to help people who genuinely need comfort, need solidarity. They feel very alone. Um, people who have kids who have ADHD and they don't really, cause like, look, I get it. If you don't know anybody who has it, if your doctor is not a particularly informed about ADHD doctor, and if you're not seeing, or if, even if you are seeing a therapist or a counselor who's not very well versed in ADHD, it can be a very bleak picture in that it's very there's a lot of they're going to be impulsive and they're going to have be prone to addiction and they're going to make bad choices and you're always going to have to parent them forever and ever and they'll never be happy and they'll never be able to hold down a, a stable job and they'll never be able to be married and they won't be able to raise kids responsibly like there's a lot of negative stuff out there but that isn't the only truth that is what those people have read so I want to put out maybe a different picture coming from someone who actually is ADHD and has lived as someone who has ADHD. So um, when I was in college and when I was in grad school, I thought, I thought you could grow out of ADHD. So I thought I had grown out of ADHD, but I really hadn't. It was really, I was still going through just be, it's like, to be blunt, it's like being an addict in that you can still hold down a job and be a raging alcoholic. Just because you haven't gotten fired yet doesn't mean you don't have a problem. It just means you can hold down a job. Um, and I'm not, my dad had a drinking problem, so that's where I'm coming from with that. I'm not trying to insult anybody. I'm just trying to find an ana Okay, so like... Yes, I did turn in my work. And yes, I never turned things in late. And yes, I was able to redo projects when I was told to redo projects. And yes, I was able to complete a thesis and turn it in on time and, and graduate with an MFA. Like, yeah, I could do all those things. But the rest of my life was bad. Okay, like I was sacrificing every other part of my life to finish grad school, which is not healthy. And as for undergrad, I mean... I enjoyed it and some of my classes were challenging but it was much easier than high school and it was much my teachers were much my professors were much nicer than most of many of my high school teachers and more understanding and more interested in working with my ideas and so college was an easier experience in high school you know so I mean because high school is really kind of awful to be real um so just because I could do some things didn't make me not ADHD and my hope for the future is that with counseling and with a doctor's supervision and perhaps even getting back on medication I'm open to that but I don't want to be in a position where 
I have another doctor who thinks that's the only solution. I'm really adamant about a more holistic approach to the ADHD than just shoving a pill in my mouth. Um, but I am very hopeful that, and may, I would really like to join, and I've talked about this before, I'd really like to join an ADHD support group. Now, my problem with the ADHD support group is that I I have a lot of friends with ADHD and I often become like this kind of mother figure for some of them, which I love them and I don't mind listening to them, but it's a one-way street where I help them and they never help with that kind of stuff or they never have the time to help with that kind of stuff. And I'm not just like ragging on my friends. I'm sorry about if it comes across that way. It's just I don't want another one of those situations. And I want to be in an ADHD support group where we actually can support each other and where it isn't just triage, where it isn't just one or two people who always have the biggest problems doing all the talking and where it's okay to talk about your like kind of penitency ADHD problems. Like, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't catch a stop sign until it was too late and it was a rolling stop and it's not a big deal, but I feel bad about it because I have driving anxiety and it just feet, you know what I mean? Like it's not really a big deal. Um, and it's not the sort of thing that tends to be like high priority to talk about, but it bothers you. And then you end up in this situation where you never get to talk about the stuff that's bothering you because it's never as big as somebody else's. So my, my ideal, my ideal ADHD support group is a bunch of other adults and maybe some older teens who are fairly together and we just commiserate over, you know, living a life and trying to, trying to get the job done and stay focused. That's like my ideal ADHD. <laughs> so we're great. You don't get to be picky. That sounds more like friends than it sounds like therapy. But that's that's my ideal support group where I would actually feel comfortable talking about, you know, like um, when I'm about to start my period, which is probably too much TMI for some of the dudes. But when I'm about to start, uh, my focus is just garbage. Like I have no focus and how it's gotten to the point where if I really don't have anything due, I just give my per myself permission to kind of take that day off and just kind of invest in doing things I like, just enjoy that don't require focus and motivation and how that's actually so much more rewarding than trying to force myself to get the job done when it's just not there, when my head is just not there because I don't actually really take days off, you know? I don't take, a, like people get weekends, I don't take weekends. I work every day, all day, you know? And that's not healthy either. Um, so stuff like that, that's kind of my ideal support group. Or like with a therapist, just having somebody that I can like say the things I feel and I don't have to worry about hurting somebody's feelings and I don't have to worry about what I'm saying being taken the wrong way because it hit a nerve. Um, it's just a, a professional who's paid to hear me out and then be like, no, you were wrong. I mean, they don't usually, they usually like walk you through why you're wrong so you can understand why you were wrong, which would be great. Um, it would, I would learn so much. Or to be like, yeah, I get where you're coming from. That's a valid feeling kind of thing, you know? So um, I am definitely, I definitely can be very helpful. Helpful, wow. Hope full and I do look forward to a future and I really am looking forward to having kids like I am I get to play with them you know I mean obviously I get to be a responsible adult mom but I also get to play with them so I'm looking forward to that there's definitely things that I'm excited about in the future and I know some ADHD folks they don't want to become parents not because they don't like kids but because they're so afraid they're gonna fail but you know I feel like I feel like as long as I'm doing my best and I just love the heck out of my kids and I try to be understanding, we'll, we'll figure it out, you know, because as a kid, that's really the thing I wanted the most was my parents to just love me and accept me for me. So I, yeah, I don't know. What do I know? I don't have kids yet. <laughs> but anyway, um, so, you know, you can, you can have ADHD and have some of the downsides that come with having ADHD and still be happy and still be hopeful and still be in a solid relationship and still be a responsible person and still get your bills paid like it's not it's not a death sentence and it's not a, a stamp of failure across your forehead um and that's one of the stigmas i really don't like and i know there's a lot of very successful very good adhd people out there and maybe someday they will be comfortable with talking about that so we can help destigmatize it i mean it's not it's not the worst stigmatized mental 
illness. I'm not pretending like we are, but it is one that is not very well understood and it's assumed to just be for children and for a really long time it was assumed to be just for boys and it's just it's still got a lot of stereotypes and we just typically don't talk about it rather than deal with all of the social pressure of having to dispel that. So, um, you know, um, something I do that I don't, I don't know if I could recommend it, but it has always worked for me in terms of relationships and friendships is I really feel like being honest with who I am, what you're getting, because I don't like being put on a pedestal and then people being mad at me if I disappoint them. Uh, the fact that I'm ADHD usually comes up real early. It's, it's like, I'm a big old nerd. I'm a professional comic artist. I like anime. Uh, I got a big heart. I like animals and I'm ADHD. <laughs> you know, like just, that's me. If you don't like it, you can walk. Cause that way I don't have to get attached to someone who's going to decide that I'm not a good fit. Yeah, it's fair if you decide that, but you know, I'd like to get that done earlier if the ADHD is the reason why and um I'd have a real problem with somebody being like I'm breaking up with you because you're ADHD like like you know like that's the reason not like some of the some of the side effects of being ADHD could be a bit too much a lot it's a lot for people to deal with which is another reason why I'm usually very upfront about it it's a lot so um you know but I have um a lot of wonderful traits and I think other folks with ADHD have a lot of wonderful traits and I think they are not necessarily discussed very often. I think they're taken for granted, frankly. Um, so you guys may also have noticed a lot of artists are ADHD or, or have come out as being ADHD, which is wonderful. Bravo for you guys. It takes so much courage. I feel you. I'm supporting you. I'm rooting for you. I'm cheering for you over here. Um, but being ADHD brings about this wonderful amount of out of the box thinking we are usually very good at solving problems in very unique ways. And sometimes those ways are not feasible and sometimes they are very feasible and no one thought of it. So um, I like being the brainstormer and I don't mind getting told no. I do mind when people just shoot down everything I say, I hate that. But you know, I do often come up with some pretty good ideas. Um, being ADHD also often leads us to daydreaming, which can make us excellent storytellers because we spend a lot of time in those mental fantasy worlds. So we can be very good storytellers. Um, a lot of ADHD people are very visual people. Uh, believe it or not, I'm not. I enjoy visual stuff, but my brain doesn't, my brain works in words and then I have to translate it into images. So drawing is not natural for me. I'm like a dog riding a tricycle. I'm okay at it, um, but it's not my my first my first you know first impulse so I'm very unusual as a comic artist I'm a writer who wanted to learn how to draw not an artist who learned how to write and um but there are a lot of artists who they're very visual and they're ADHD and I think there might be some correlation between that and um often you know some of the ADHD people I have met not all of them but some of the ones who they know what they are and they've had to work really hard to accept themselves. Some of them are some of the kindest, most empathetic, most generous people I've ever met. Um, and I'm not saying that as if someone who's biased towards ADHD, I'm saying that as they just have the biggest hearts and they are so compassionate. They can really put themselves in other people's shoes. They can really imagine what it's like, especially when it comes to being someone who falls into like an other kind of category or someone who's typically bullied. Um, there is often a, a, a huge amount of generosity towards bringing people into the fold and making sure everybody's accepted. So um, I also know a lot of ADHD people are very, very funny. Um, they have really wonderful sense of humor. You have to be. You'll either go, you'll go nuts if you, if you don't have a good sense of humor. You got to be able to laugh at yourself or you'll eat yourself up with self-loathing. So um, there's a lot of really good traits. A lot of the dudes I know who are ADHD are incredibly charming, um, very charismatic, sometimes to everyone else's detriment. Uh, and some of the women I know who are ADHD are incredibly charming and charismatic and people really like them and they have these magnetic personalities. So there are a lot of really positive traits that I think come from either how our brains are formed or how, what we have gone through to get to adulthood. And I think that there's a lot to love about people with ADHD. And I don't think we're better than other people, you know what I mean. But I think we are as good 
as other people. And I would really, really like to see the traits that make us, us valued and acknowledged instead of taken for granted or used, you know, because often that creativity, those ideas are stolen by someone else and then represented. You know what I mean? Because maybe we don't have the confidence to present our own ideas because we're so used to getting shot down all the time. So um, anyway, in the first video, we talked about what it was like for me growing up with ADHD. Your experiences may vary. And if they did, let me know in the comments. Please don't just disagree with me. Please just frame it as your experiences because just because our experiences are different does not make them invalid. It just makes them different. And in this video, we talked about a little bit about what it was like being ADHD as an older teen. That's like a whole meaty topic that I am not necessarily comfortable <laughs> with right now. Uh, and we also talked about what it's like being a female adult with ADHD as someone who grew up with the ADHD mindset. Because I do kind of think having always been ADHD and also dealing with how society treats people with ADHD and how teachers have treated me and how friends have treated me um, has definitely colored how I view myself. Whereas someone who was diagnosed as an adult maybe didn't grow up with that always on them all the time. So I think there's different, you know, I mean, in on that hand, I've always known what was wrong with me. It was never like, whoa, what was wrong with me? It's like, well, I kind of know. Um, and I kind of know how to address it. And I kind of know some of it can't be addressed, right? So like, there's pros to being diagnosed as a kid. And there's pros to being diagnosed as a, an adult and not having dealt with the stigma necessarily. Of course, then you're dealing with the stigma of people think you're lazy, but you're not, you're ADHD. So um, anyway, this was kind of a long, my life with ADHD it was a two-parter, but I hope it was helpful for you guys. I hope it was inspiring for you guys. And if you're looking for some uplifting ADHD media that portrays someone with ADHD in a positive and loving light, I would really love it if you guys would read Seven Inch Kara. You guys can read the first six chapters, like I said, for free at sevenincharacom There's a lot more to Seven Inch Kara. We're on hiatus right now just because I'm preparing for the Kickstarter. I don't want to release all that goodness. I wanted to go to the Kickstarter people first. So um, if you like what you read, don't assume that's all there is to it. There is a mailing list you can sign up to get an update when the Kickstarter goes live. And I'm going to be sharing a lot of behind the scenes stuff to that mailing list as well. So it's worth it just to check it out. So um, I'm going to put a link to that in the description as well. If you guys have questions about the, my ADHD experience, let me know. Reach out to me. I'm happy to talk about it. I'm open to talking about it. But in terms of medical questions, whether or not you should get excuse me, you should ask for a diagnosis, etc. I really recommend you ask your doctor. Uh, because again, not a, not a medical professional. Art professional, not a medical professional. Anyway, I'll see you guys with another video really soon. Bye guys.